Today's webinar is interactive slides for classroom engagement. So going to be going over a lot of resources again this week, same as last week. Okay, so hope you guys are ready to learn. And I know we have, uh, Todd's has uh, prepared a lot of activities and things for you as well to uh, kind of practice. Yeah, it's going to be starting actually right now, you know. <laughs> so I will be handing it off to our guest and expert presenter, uh, Mr. Todd Bukins. So Todd, if you're ready, I'm ready to hand it off to you. Actually, uh, yes, I am. I'm sure I should start. Uh, you gotta, I yep, need to get I'm host profile. To, yep, I just remembered right now. And there you go. So I'll hand it off to you, Todd, and thank you guys very much for coming, and I'll see you all later. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, maybe some people, I will see you for the second time, or you'll see me for the second time. Maybe you came last week. So uh, like last week, um, we are going to go over quite a few tools, not quite so many, but there are quite a few, and I'm going to break it down, but the main thing that we want you to do is to know about the functionality of the tools. Uh, and we will do a little bit step by step. We will create something in Nearpod. But we're going to go, we're going to look at six, uh, five different tools. Um, first, we're going to look at Google Slides and Kami. Then we're going to look at uh, PowerPoint. And you are going to learn the secret power of PowerPoint that a lot of people don't know about. And I just discovered actually last term and now I'm addicted to it. Um, I use PowerPoint every class now because of it. Uh, and then we're going to look at Nearpod, which is an amazing tool to make your, your lessons incredibly interactive. Um, and it's free. Uh, it's a premium model, but even with the free version, you can create some pretty cool stuff. We're going to do a sample lesson about sharks and we're going to show you step by step how to make a Nearpod presentation in minutes actually. And then at the end, we're going to talk about the new feature with quizzes, which I just found out yesterday. Well, I found out this week, but I tried out yesterday. So how quizzes now is getting in the game, and it's going to compete with Nearpod and Pear Deck. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, nice to have all these visitors from around the world. It's 11 o'clock here in Japan. I'm just across the pond from Gary in Korea. And... Um, uh, yes, okay, so here we go. So we're going to go ahead and begin. And here is the presentation. And so it's going to be interactive slides. And I'm just going to do a quick breakdown. Uh, we're going to go fast, 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 okay? Uh, so don't worry, there will be links to tutorials that you can do later, which we'll share via the email that shows step by step how to do everything, okay? So if I were to do everything in depth, we would be here all day. And the main thing is we just want you to know the basic functionality of what these tools can do and to kind of play. So the first thing we're going to do Google Slides for about 10 minutes. Uh, and then we're going to look at Kami for about five minutes and how they work together. Then we're going to do PowerPoint for about 10 minutes, uh, how to use listening activities with PowerPoint. Then we're going to do Nearpod for 20 minutes and we're going to finish up with quizzes. So let's go ahead and begin. So let's go ahead and look at um, what you can do with Nearpod. So I'm sorry, with, uh, with um, Google Slides. So the main thing about Google Slides is everybody knows it's used as a slide presentation tool. But what a lot of people don't know, it is probably the best uh, document editor on the web. It's amazing. These are worksheets that I made for my classes. And so one thing you can do with Google Slides is they make it very, very easy to make worksheets. And when you make a worksheet in Google, um, Google Slides, it gives you three options. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Google Slides here. Uh, and so what I've done is I've created just a worksheet template. Here's my worksheet template. And then I can easily add an image. I could add a QR code. And I could have this document so students can do it three ways. First, they can do it online. So if you share the PowerPoint with a student, I'm sorry, not the PowerPoint, the Google slide with the student, I want to be doing that the whole class. I'm, I'm always saying the wrong word, PowerPoint and Google slide. So one thing you can do is let's say the student has to match, right? So pregnant here, this is number four. 
right? A magazine, that is number nine. A station wagon, that is number three. So you could easily make a document that students can do online. So they can do it in Google Slides, and this works out really well if you have uh, Google Classroom. Now, you could also save it as a PDF. So once you make a document, let's say you have a PDF, and you, here's, this is a template, so there's a lot in here. So once it's a PDF, if you export it as a PDF, then a student can just open it up in Kami, and Kami is a free extension that they could do in their Google Shared Doc. And then a student can actually do the Google slide in Kami. So this is going to connect to my Kami account. Um, so you can get a free account with Kami with your Google address. So let's say your Google email. So let's say I want to do this one right here. Well, if I use Kami, I can do text. I can do draw. I can add shapes. So I'm just going to do the easy one, draw. I can choose the color that I want. So let's say I want purple, right? And I say, okay, station wagon is three. Gooseberry, I don't know if that's really actually what gooseberries look like. If you're from New Zealand, you can correct me. I think that might be green. Uh, jar, um, jar is six, right? So this is really powerful because if you are doing Zoom and you're doing emergency remote teaching, you can create a document. Uh, in Google Slides, and then you can make it look exactly like a worksheet, and then students have three options. You have three options to use it. You can use it in Google Slides. They actually change things around in Google Slides. You can use it as a PDF in Kami, so maybe you share the PDF with the students, and they do it from their home while you're doing a Zoom lesson or a Teams lesson or a Meet lesson. Or you can even print it out if somehow you can get them the paper version and they can draw and they can use it. So doing this is really easy. And I'll show you a simple, simple trick how, how to do it. So let's say I'm going to go back to Drive now. And let's say I want to create a new slide. So in my Google Drive, I just go New Slides and just hit Presentation, Blank Presentation. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to remove this, all this stuff here, and I'm going to get it out of horizontal view into paper view or vertical view. So then I'm going to go over to File and hit Page Setup, and I'm going to change it to Custom. And because I'm American, uh, it's got it in inches, but you can do it in centimeters. But I do know the inch and dimensions of, eight point, of A4 paper. And it's 8.3 by 11.7. I've done it so many times, I know it by heart. I know I like my phone number. And so then if I hit apply, whoop, look at that. And then if I hit control V, I can do as many papers as I want. Now, I don't have time to talk about this now, but this also is the easiest way for students to make a book. If you, are, if you like doing task-based learning, project-based learning, all the students can write a page or they can write multiple pages and then you can combine the book and compile it, make a nice book in seconds. So let's go ahead and see how, I, how easy this is to make. So let's say I want to make a listening activity uh, on this art. This is from my website, Ello, right, at the mall. And so here is the demo one that I did at the mall. Here it is. And I want to make it so students would go online and they would listen to this and then they could do something on paper, they can do something on the, on the Google slide, or they can do something on the PDF. So I could create something like uh, an image in Canvi, Canvi, <laughs> Canvas. Man, I'm stumbling with my words today. So here is, where's the one at the mall? Here's the one I did at the mall. And then I made this nice graphic. So I was able to get all the images I wanted using uh, Canva, and here it is. So you can make your visual graphic in Canva, and then you can just download it. I'm going to go ahead and download it here. It'll just take a second. And then you can just throw that right onto, Can uh, onto Google Slides, and here it is. I've actually already done it once. So 
oh, it's this untitled. So here I could take my image and just drag it on there, and whoop, there it is, ta-da. So now I've added an, an image with nice graphics using Canva. We talked about this last week. And then let's say I want to do the, I want to do a QR code. So then I would come here to the website. I would get the URL. I would go to QR stuff. There's many websites out there available. And I would get a free QR code from QR stuff. And so then I put in, I paste in the, the code there. And then I can just drag that out. Maybe I can just drag it out there. And here it is. And then, oops, excuse me. Sorry about that. If I come back to my document, now if I drag this little QR code, put it there, and I, I hope that's the right one. It didn't download, download the wrong one. So now I could add the text, as you all know how to do. It's very easy just to add the text. And then if I wanted to have a document that has listening, now it's ready to go. It's ready to roll. So the students can have the listening using the QR code. So here it is. It's going to come up on my on my screen here, hopefully in just a second. And then they would be able to play the audio. And here it is. It's at the mall. Ta-da! You can see there it is. And then they can play the video. So Katie, I want to go to the mall. Okay. Have you been to the new mall? And my I actually went there just yet. Little self promotion. My website has over two thousand five hundred free listening activities, so you can access all that information for free. Um, but as you can see, uh, that was very easy to do in Google Slides, and people don't think of Google Slides as making worksheets, but it's super super easy to do. And then once you have a worksheet in your Google Drive, then here is a PDF. A student can open up the PDF and they can just open up any document using Kami. So I, oh, excuse me here, I have the wrong one there. So I can open it up here with Kami and voila. So now if the student wants, they could work on the document uh, at home and they can draw, they can add shapes, they can circle. There's a lot that they can do. All right, so that was the first bit. Again, we're moving on to actually better, better tools, uh, but you can use Google Slides to make really nice PDFs in seconds. And the students then can do it three ways. They can do it online, they can do it as a PDF, or they can do it as a paper version. Now there's another kind of cool thing you can do. If you have breakout rooms, I like to do games like this where the students can play like tic-tac-toe. So for example, here it is down here. I would share just one document. I don't wanna have too many documents open, but what I do is I tell, I give a document like this, and I tell the students they just have to copy paste, and they can now play tic-tac-toe, speaking tic-tac-toe based on the document. So you could use Google Slides a lot of ways as a game board. So for example, one student goes first, uh, he said he wants to buy a computer at the mall. Then the next student, she says she only buys cheap clothing. And then the next student, uh, they both say they want to watch a Japanese movie. And then maybe this student says, oh, they mentioned that the roof garden has nice views. And the students, they have tech skills. They can easily just copy paste if they need to um, change, uh, if they need more board pieces. There's just a lot you can do. So there it is, we're moving on, that's Google Slides. All right, now, next, uh, we are going to move on to PowerPoint. So, uh, who knew, <laughs> who knew PowerPoint was the ultimate tool for self-listening task, uh, self-paced listening. So one thing I like to do with students is make a variety of PowerPoints and the students can do activities on the PowerPoint. So we'll just look at three, but I will share a link uh, later and you can download them all. Um, one thing that you can do is, for example, you can do, uh, let's see, a uh, test dialogue. Okay, so you can do a dictation. So dictations are quite boring, right? They're not fun. Well, with PowerPoint, what you can do is have students do a dictation and then put a conversation together. 
So for example, here, and let me go ahead and actually stop sharing real fast and share again and make sure, uh, let's see, yep. I want to share here and I need to share my audio, sorry. There it is, okay, all right, here we go. So here the student can play audio in edit mode in PowerPoint. So as you can see, PowerPoint can have multiple listening tasks that the student can do. They can play the audio. Here they'll play the audio. Oh, I love that course. I tried it last week. So then maybe the student then would have to type in, they would do the dictation. Oh, oh, it's got, it's got it in here in Japanese. Just one second here. I'm in Japan, so it's the default. Oh, I love that course. I tried it last week. And then they can see, okay, did I get it right? Was that the correct dictation? Oh, I love that course. I tried it last ah, week. So then they can go to the next one. I didn't know you played golf. So then, ah, I didn't know you played golf. Uh, so then they would type it in. And then they would go to the next one. I played golf at the new course by the river. And then I played golf. So then what they would do is after they do the dictation, then they've got to rearrange it and put the conversation in order. And this is a really fun activity to do with students because they can do it in groups. So you just share the PowerPoint file. It won't be that big. I, it'll have audio added to it and it'll be the blank that they just fill in. And then they have to compile it and put it together. So it's like a listening task. And one thing about PowerPoint is there's a lot of different listening tasks that you can do. So at the end, we'll show you how to make this really quickly, but that's one example. Uh, and one thing I love about PowerPoint is that when you do the demo, if you just say don't save, it reverts back to the original copy. So I don't have to worry about losing it. All right, so of course you want the students to save and you wanna check their work. Another thing you can do is word order. So you can do a sorting activity where let's say a student plays a clip. Craig Rogers was sitting on his surfboard. So then like, okay, so it's Craig, Rogers was, and then they can play it again if they need more help. Craig Rogers was sitting on his surfboard. So it's an easy sorting activity that you can do. And sometimes what I'll do is have them put together a whole paragraph. You can do multiple lines, very easy. And the thing is, I, I'm actually not a tech guy. I'm an instructional designer. My master's degree is in instructional design. And one of the things about this activity that makes these listening puzzles, as I like to call them, so effective is actually the kinetic movement. The students have to move their hands and their eyes differently than they would. The normal check, what's the you know, correct answer, click, click, click. That's not very engaging. So having to even rearrange the visual element on the page to do different skills and the fact is, is we are moving to a part in history where students are going to have to do a lot of things online. And there's one more thing. Sometimes, I'm going to wag my finger here, sometimes teachers will say, oh, it's too much for students. No, <laughs> it is not. This is the millennial generation. They were born with apps. Apps were invented before they were even born, most of our students. So they are used to moving things around. I've never had a tour where a student couldn't figure it out, couldn't know, didn't know how to do it. So the teacher maybe, but not the student. So anyway, we want the different interactivities for the students when they do the task. So you can do sorting. Uh, another activity that you can do is, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think the good ones here. Um, uh, you can do one where they have to move a slide. So here you can have, you can pre-teach an activity. Like for example, we have left. And left can mean uh, leave, past tense. It can mean to not take something. It can mean opposite of right. And it can mean remaining, how much is remaining. So you can do an activity that has no text. And notice you can make a template. And so you can replicate the task as many times as you want. And then if the student plays the audio, 
There are not many people left at the party. There are not many people left at the party. Ah, so here, that means remaining. So then they go to the next one. Someone left their purse on the table. Sorry, I'm sorry if the volume's not very loud. Somebody left their purse at the table. Ah, that's this left. So again, you can do repetitive tasks. Once the student knows how to do it, then they can do it again and again and again. And so for a, an activity like this with homograms, you can keep switching it up. Uh, you can do um, something like this one right here. This is my favorite, actually. So let's say you have a long listening task, right? Like you want to do a TED Talk or a lecture, uh, something that's long. What you can do is break it up. So here's a lecture from a book that we do. And this book is called Lecture Ready. And the lecture is nine minutes long. That's quite a bit of time, right? So what you could do is have the students listen to the lecture. Good morning, everyone. Ready to get started? Okay. Good. Oops. Our topic today is diet and health. Today we'll discuss the reasons people choose the food they eat. So what they would do is the students we we'll say, ah, okay, so from zero to 20 seconds, our topic today is diet and health. And usually this is the demonstration box that I do. Then the student plays it again. What I mean is maybe they choose for nutrition, that is getting the right type of food for good health and growth, or maybe they choose for pleasure, meaning they choose food because it tastes good. But before we go into why people choose the food they do, I'd like to give you some background and briefly explain two basic purposes of food. Ah, two basic purposes of food goes here. So then the student can do it for each segment. They've got to put all of these in the right spot, but it slows it down. Again, instructional design. The student has an input and they have to react and they have to do something to be awake, to be alert. So the students can do, usually what I do is I say, okay, you've got uh, three minutes or four minutes to do slide two. And then I stop, put them in, and this is for Zoom. I put them together, they've got to match it. Okay, now, same thing for slide three. They've got four minutes to listen on their end and then put it together and match it and then share and compare. And an activity like this is really good for listening uh, another one of my specialties in ELT is listening, and I like it because it's not so much like, you know, what did the person buy? He bought a book. No one cares. They're not learning anything, right? So here, they can actually just focus on the language. Uh, it's really good modeling for language, not only for content words, but for non-content words, maybe for transitional phrases or kind of uh, funky ways that we say things. So, for example, in this one, she says, I give up. And so you can, mod you can have them listen for bits of language in just another way. Also, it's very visual. So when it's done, it's, it's very easy for them to see that they've accomplished something. They understand the end, there's an end point which will help them want to do the task. Uh, now, we have, I have over 10 examples. Again, I could have done this all just on PowerPoint, but I'm not because Nearpod's even more awesome. So we're just going to rush through it. But I want to find, this is really bad because I cannot find the one I was going to do for my example. Uh, which one? Maybe it's this one, I hope. Yeah, okay. So here's one that the students do um, where they would have to listen and notice which word has been changed. Okay, so this, I think, is the student version. Parents, teachers, and anyone who regularly deals with teenagers. Okay, so this is the answer sheet. So then what they do here is I would uh, just get it, make it all blank. I just changed, actually, I'm going to go back there. So I changed the words to synonyms, and then I would just give the students this copy. It's very basic. And the words are going to be different, but they don't know which words are different. And again, this is actually something you can't do on paper. You could have them right above the word. But um, it's kind of actually, it works better on PowerPoint. So they would play the audio. Parents, teachers, and anyone who regularly... Ah, and they would be like, ah, anyone, right? And so then I would say, okay, please type it up. I change the word and put it in bold. And that would be their task. And so you're doing more bottom-up listening. We don't do enough bottom-up listening in textbooks. Um, and it's kind of like a completion. So 
Now, here's the, here's the big thing. You're probably wondering, how do you actually create something like this? Well, we'll preview the next section. So I'm going to insert a new slide uh, and show you how it's done. It's really easy. How you need amazing technical skills to do an audio activity in PowerPoint. So here is the activity we're going to do today. It's about sharks. That's coming up next in Nearpod. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this and just put it uh, in my blank presentation here. So I'm just going to go insert text. Uh, where is text box? Text box. You think I would have done this before? Um, why is it not? Oh, there it is. Text box. Okay. So I'm going to put it here. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't do it. When you do it, you got to stretch it out. I'm actually, yeah, I do it on my Mac usually. So anyway, here it is. So uh, we're going to do this text right here. And I am going to make it a bit bigger. Let's make it, uh, that's it. Okay. So then to, to add audio to a, an activity, you just do, you just find the audio and you can record the audio in Audacity. And here it is. Sorry, I've got it rearranged around the screen. I thought I wanted it in the middle. So then if you just actually just drag it on the screen, uh, PowerPoint will just put it there. Ta -da, and then it works. Millions of television viewers watching the surfing championships in South Africa. So then you could, if I wanted to, I can change the word or I can do any task. But one of the things that's cool about PowerPoint is you, you create the template and then you can just make more and more activities. All right, so about PowerPoint, there's a, a couple of tricks about this. One, it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or a PC, but you need PowerPoint. It works best if they have PowerPoint on their computer, because then they can download it. You can do it in OneDrive. So they can do it in edit mode in OneDrive. If they switch to presentation mode, the audio will play millions of, but then they can't change it. They have to escape, go back into edit mode. So it's kind of a weird thing. Like who knew that PowerPoint would be such a cool uh, canvas for doing listening activities, but you have to actually do them in edit mode. You can do them online. It's just not as easy. Um, it's done preferably offline. Even though PowerPoint is a proprietary software, I include it because it's one of those things that almost all schools have. So, I mean, almost everybody has it. So that's why uh, I, and my school uses it. We use the OneDrive system. So the difference between uh, Google Slides and PowerPoint is that uh, Google Slides has better app extensions, without a doubt. Uh, but PowerPoint is the best for video and audio, without a doubt. Actually, Google is really behind on just throwing audio onto the canvas. So if you want to add audio listing activities, you pretty much want to go PowerPoint. Um, by far, it's the best. I mean, maybe things will change over time, but as far as I know right now, PowerPoint is the easiest. And you can uh, create audio using Audacity. So for example, um, let's say I were to do a new file and say, hello everybody, you are going to watch a presentation about sharks. And then I could play it here. A, a, hello everybody, Ooh, it's gonna be really loud, sorry about that. So then I could export it and I'm gonna have to export it as a WAV file and I'll just save it as un, untitled for now. This is to show you just how easy it is. And then here is my, my audio. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document. I'm gonna remove that audio. And if I just again, drag it onto the screen. Hey, hello everybody. Ooh, sorry, so loud. So it's very easy to add audio if you want and, and add it to a PowerPoint and create your own listening tasks. All right. Uh, so I'm almost at the halfway point and we've got to get going because now it's time for the marquee event. So those are actually the appetizers. Now, I'm going to be using Nearpod. And I'm going to go ahead and start closing all my screens here. So it's uh, just a little bit cleaner for me. So Nearpod is, it's been around for a while, but they really, really upped their game the last year. And they are now just an incredible, incredible product. 
So here is an example of, oops, sorry. So here is an example of my Nearpod account. And what Nearpod allows you to do is to add interactivity to your slides. And you can upload slides, Google Slides or PowerPoint, does not matter actually. And um, they have a new beta version. You can do video as well. Uh, but it's actually best, I think, just to make the presentation in Nearpod. So uh, we're going to have a game. I, I have the premium account, which only has 90 free licenses. So. Uh, you can join if you wish. So you want to go to nearpod.com slash student. And Gary, if you can put that in the chat window, that would be a big help for me. So I don't have to pop out. And you're going to get this screen right here. So it's very easy for the students to onboard. It's the same as Kahoot, quizzes, everything. And I better get in here so you guys don't beat me. So uh, A, E, Q, S, B, I type in the code and then it'll ask for my name. And by the way, if you cannot join, I'm gonna be showing it on this from student, a student's perspective. So you should be able to follow along. So I'm gonna write my name and also my country, Todd Japan. And I don't have to put other. And I'm going to say join lesson. And notice I'm just going to get this, this screen. So Nearpod is really good because if you are doing a lesson with Zoom or Meets or whatever, you can just do a very vanilla PowerPoint or whatever. They can see it on their device. So that they don't have to see it through your window. And because they see it on their device, you can add interactivity as you will see. So if I come back here to Nearpod, I can see I have seven participants. Nine, it's probably gonna go up, 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 up. So if you have not joined yet, you want to join AEQSB. I highly recommend you join. Uh, it'll be a lot more engaging if you can. And, ooh, I hope I didn't, I didn't kick it out. Okay. Um, while we're doing this, waiting for people to join, uh, maybe Gary, if there are any questions, I can answer some questions. We have one in the Q&A. Uh, does uh -huh. Keynote also work in place of PowerPoint? Uh, yeah, so definitely. Uh, Keynote can do everything Microsoft can do and better, actually. So if your students have Keynote, yes, they can do it. They can also do it in edit mode, the same thing. Um, I haven't used it in a long time, but from my memory, yeah, you can. It's only Google Slides. And I'm not really sure about OpenOffice and LibreOffice. I keep on meaning to check, but I doubt it. I doubt that you can. But yeah, for Keynote for sure. And actually, oh, another point. Keynote is actually for the Google slide trick about making that to create PDFs. Keynote's even better. Keynote is so good. Like you almost don't need pages on the Mac because you can just use Keynote. And it's so much simpler than, than pages. And it's really fast. All right, so we're climbing. Look at this. We've got 43 people. Okay, so here's the cool thing about Nearpod. You can join late. So, folks, if you have not been able to join, you're still joining. We still got 45 slots left. You can join in progress. So, no worries, okay? Now, notice on my demo screen, nothing. I can't do anything. The student can't click. Right, that's the first thing students want to do, right? They want to click, they want to move. Come on, teacher, boring. They can't do anything. They don't have any power. They're stuck, okay? Because the teacher controls it with these panels. And every time I change the panel, new interactivity will appear. So we're going to do one on sharks. So if I click the next one, we can do an elicitation activity here. So this is the slide collaboration, and it says, would you like to approve student comments? Yes, because I don't know where pe what people are doing around the world. So I'm going to click yes, and then I'm going to approve it as they come in. So I click this, and the question is, what animals frighten you? Add a picture if you like. So for me, believe it or not, roosters frighten me. And I can find an image down here. I'm going to type in rooster. And there's one right there. I grew up on a farm, and when I was a little boy, the roosters would, they'll chase kids. If you've grown up on a farm, you know this. The most <laughs> animals scare you to death is roosters because they're very territorial, and if you walk around them, they'll want to come up and peck you. So that was it. So if you want, everybody now can add their stuff. 
uh, and I've got all this stuff that I have to approve. So snakes, I'm going to start approving stuff. Snakes, oh, there's going to be a lot of snakes. Dog, uh, ooh, tiger, look at that. Uh, rats, so I'm going to try to get everybody's in here. Spiders, spiders, ooh, shark. Julio, you've pre previewed the, the activity. So the teacher can do this. Now with my, with my students, I never do this. It's, it's, as they say in Japanese, mendokusai. It takes too much time. I would not do it. But if it's an open public forum, I might do it. So notice I have all of this. Ooh, look at that scary photo. Cats, Colleen, that's very interesting. Daniela, ducks, I could see that. I could see, or maybe that's a goose. Goose are really scary. Okay, so I'm not going to have enough time to get everybody, but notice now it's a nice pre-listening or pre-activity uh, pre to set the context. We can put this up and students can now maybe talk about it. And I think you should be able to show emotions. So you can, I see somebody did one for rats. You can add little likes to other people's if so. So that's the collaboration board. Very cool, very useful. All right, so now... Uh, it says, uh, the slide contains video. Where would you like this video to be played? Okay, I'm going to say all devices because that means there's no latency from me to you. You can play the video on your own device. So I'm going to click this. And this is a video about a shark. So let's watch it and see what happens. So you can play it on your device if you like. I'm not going to play it online. Oh, I'm gonna have to stop it here. I'm gonna stop it on my my device and play it on this one. So I'm going to move on because we have to really cut the time. And so what I did is I made a article about this. It's four paragraphs. And so again, the student can play the audio or I can play the audio. You can just have the students read it. I'll play the audio here. Millions of television viewers watching the surfing championships in South Africa witnessed a spectacle that seemed straight out of a horror film. While sitting on a surfboard waiting to compete, Surfer Nick Fanning was seemingly attacked by a great white shark on live television. Or was he? In plain sight, viewers saw the shark slowly emerge from the water and gnaw at his surfboard. Fanning naturally started flailing in the water to get away from the shark. But as rescuers rushed to the scene, the shark simply swam away. So you can have content like this, and then here's the interactivity part. If I switch it, now the students have a quiz, right? And I can see the results of all the students. So participation is expected. So the students now would have to read the article. So here, what happened at the encounter? I have the shark swam away. The student clicks next. And where did the event take place? South Africa. They hit submit, and then it's over. And then my answers uh, should be recorded here. There they are. And the teacher sees green is correct, red is wrong. And so then uh, the teacher can view the progress. And if a student did really well, like Leslie, now I want to go over the answers. The students can see my screen. I can say, oh, Leslie, nice job, right? Leslie got it right. It was C, and then it was B. Good job, Leslie. And so you can give uh, highlight students participation. So then we'll do another one. Here we go. I'll play it again, again with audio. It's about 30 seconds long. Further review of the footage suggests that perhaps the shark was not aggressive at all, and more likely just curious. Scientists now think that sharks use their teeth similarly to the way humans use their fingers or cats use their paws to poke or prod an unknown object. What is unclear to researchers is the nature of most shark encounters. Are sharks being aggressive or just curious? Data shows that when a shark bites a human, it is more likely to swim away than continue the attack. Most shark attacks do not end in a fatality. 
So then the student would do that, and then they could do a gap fill. So this is a fun activity. So then the students would have to put the words, they would have to reread it and put in the missing words. So further review of the footage uh, suggests that perhaps the shark is not aggressive at all and more likely just curious. Scientists now think sharks use their teeth similarly, right? And so here, the student would just put in the missing words. Uh, and I like to do this in breakout rooms. Sometimes uh, I put them in small groups if you're doing Zoom and the students will have to read it and then share the answer. They click done. And then the teacher, I will see here uh, who's done it. Uh, Everett in Japan's already done. Diana's done. Uh, 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 Sira, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. <laughs> Uh, Yuko is done, right? And then if the students are really lost, I can just show them the answers. Hey guys, here's the answers. That was it. So this is a really fun activity. So we're gonna do another one. Uh, it kind of helps, I'm sorry, it's again 30 seconds long. Still, sharks are ferocious creatures and can be deadly. The most aggressive sharks are bull sharks and mako sharks, although attacks are incredibly rare. These sharks are thought to be aggressive because humans are roughly the same size as seals, one of their main prey in the water. Other sharks, such as the hammerhead shark or nurse shark, usually only attack when provoked. Still, other sharks, like the whale shark, a gentle giant, are no threat to humans. Right, and so notice here, by the way, I could have, I have images in the background. We're going to show you how to do this when we finish but I could have images that set the context completely, right? So not only can you have the audio to add to the, to the listening, but you can, or the reading, I'm sorry, but you could also have an image to set the context. And here I have a nice image of a whale shark and a woman who seems to be uh, not too worried about the shark. So then another thing you can do is the drawing. This is a, a fun activity. So here, the students would have a different type of interaction. So draw a circle around the most dangerous sharks, draw a line under non-aggressive sharks, draw a heart next to harmless sharks. So I'm gonna go down here and click the color, and for dangerous, I'm gonna choose red, and the megalodon is not mentioned, and that's an ancient shark. So sometimes I put stuff that's not mentioned in the reading, kind of trick up the students, right? So the students would do this, and then maybe if they want, they can change the color, nice blue, so the whale shark, the hammerhead shark, and the nurse shark uh, are not aggressive sharks. And then completely harmless, I'm going to give a big heart to the whale shark. The whale shark will not harm people. By the way, if you're a shark expert, you might be like, what? That's not true. I know hammerheads very, very, very rarely attack humans, but it does happen. Nurse sharks basically will only bite you if you prod them. Uh, they have no interest in humans at all, from what I know. Um, but if you're a shark expert, I could be wrong, and I am sorry. So then the student would submit it, and then here, as the teacher, I could see everybody's answer. So this is a really nice uh, uh, lesson. You could do this for correcting grammar mistakes or editing, showing them how to edit a paper, find the mistakes, the spelling mistake, whatever. Uh, I, can, I can click on one here, like here's one. By Mimi, good job, right? And I can highlight her work. Um, I can flip through to other students' work, see what they did, right? So really fun activity, the drawing feature. Okay, so next, uh, we are going to go to one more. The same cannot be said for sharks, though. While there are fewer than 10 reported human fatalities from sharks each year, Millions of sharks are killed by humans annually in commercial or recreational activities. Steven Spielberg, the director of the famous horror film Jaws, has stated he regrets depicting sharks in such a dangerous manner. Perhaps he just got the roles reversed. Okay, so then it's the end, and then um, here I can do a poll. So... Based on the reading, are you afraid of sharks? <laughs> I'm going to put yes, I still am. And I wrote it. <laughs> I wrote the thing. I would still be terrified. I would be terrified if I saw a shark in the water. 
it's so hard. But anyway, um, so then I would hit submit and I'm done. And then as the teacher, I can see the answers pour in. Oh, look at a lot of people, bees. Oh, cool. And then you can go over the answers if you want. You can share the results so the students can see. You can use this as a discussion topic. All right, so the next, we're going to move on. Okay, so now you can search for a really cool video. So let's say you want to use video just as a discussion topic. So you can find video in Nearpod that perfectly matches your topic. I found the, the I actually based it on the surfer uh, episode, also based on another shark article and a textbook, but I wanted to find, could I find an image of a shark being harmless and gentle? And sure enough, using the search engine in Nearpod, there's this beautiful video of a great white shark just chilling. And what's amazing is look how big that shark is. It is two, three times, at least two times the length of those surfboards. And those surfers, by the way, had no idea. This, was a, this footage was done by like a 14-year-old boy or girl in Australia, I can't remember. And he was trying out his drone. He lived nearby. And his drone captured this footage of these surfers. They have no idea, obviously, like how, how, how relaxed they are. Um, so it's a pretty amazing footage, actually, uh, that, they, that they did this. So then you could use this as a discussion point, and then you can go to the next one. And then now you can do a, kind of a deeper question, an open-ended question, and I'd like to see your answers. Why do you think the shark did not attack the surfers? So I would, for me, why do you think the shark did not attack the surfers? So a user would use the open-ended question box. I'm going to put... Uh, because it, because people are not what it normally eats, okay? Uh, maybe you can put it wasn't hungry, it wasn't its, its feeding time, its hunting time. Um, it can change. And then notice, then the teacher can see that I've got my answer here, and then I can go over, right? Uh, so here, because they don't feel the attack by Daniela, that's nice. It wasn't interested in them or it wasn't hungry. Uh, it thought the sharks were seaweed simply floating. That's a good, well, that could be it. Uh, because it wasn't hungry, because it was not hungry. So you can then get the participation. The students know that the participation is expected of them. And here I've got, gosh, how many do I have now? I have a lot in this group. I've got 68. So if you've only got 15, it's a lot different, right? So when you only have 15 uh, or 20, then it's really easy to make sure everybody's participating and everybody is, is part of it. Uh, and then I could end it. I think this is it. This is the last slide, if I remember. Um, and then, uh, oh, no, we're going to do time to climb. Oh, my God, this is the best game. Okay, sorry. So now we're going to do time to climb. So here, this is the interactive game that you can do anytime in quizzes. I'm sorry, in Nearpod. And you can do this just doing time to climb. It's kind of like quizzes or Kahoot. You have to choose a theme. So I choose my theme here, time to climb. And then everybody is going to have their thing. I'm going to try to mute my audio here. Uh, right, okay. And then I'm going to mute my audio here. Okay, so sorry, so you won't hear that, that annoying audio. So then what the students do now, I've created this game. Oh, look at everybody populate, yay. So then we choose a character. I'm going to just choose the bear. Okay, so I'm going to choose the bear, and then I'm going to hit start. And then I'm ready. I'm going to pop up in the screen. And then I can wait for everybody to get connected. So everybody now is going to compete. They're going to climb to the top. And this game works exactly like quizzes in Kahoot. It's based on accuracy and speed. So the faster you answer a question, the more points you get, okay? And, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. Okay, so then what we would do is uh, I would hit start. I'm going to have to go ahead and hit start, guys, because we're running out of time for people that haven't joined yet. I'll give it 30 more seconds. Uh, while I'm doing this, let me just explain that I will give you a link at the end of the class. And you will be able to go to that link. And you, I will post later today 
um, all of the videos, the video training on how to do this, okay? And, and where you can get more free video training on how to do this. So I know this is really fast. This is, again, we're showing the functionality. I will show you the step-by-step -step in just a minute, a little bit, but don't worry if um, it seems like it's going too fast. All right, so I've got 54 out of 70. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and start it. So the, begin the game begins. Hopefully it's going to let me start. Okay, so it's going to begin. So then what happens is the, the, the student, this is, I get the console board. It's going to look different for me. And the students will get the question. And there's so many ways you can use this. Um, I use it as a summary. I use it for checking grammar on the reading. I use it to make it like a quiz, like on facts, just general facts that are not in the reading to see if they know. It might be loading really slowly here, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do this because I've never done it with this many people. Um, it should begin. And so some people have already done it. It's really slow on my end, so it's not – I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the game, I guess, because it's just – sorry. So then the next question comes up, and then this one is, what do sharks use their teeth for? And then everybody will answer, and they kind of move up. And I think the game is just being overloaded right now. So normally it's probably not designed to have this many people do it. Um, so, but anyway, that's it. That's, that's climb to the top. And we'll go ahead and actually finish this because we just don't have time to do it today. But Everett from Japan, congratulations. <laughs> Dim Sum, Kali, Lily, you were winning when we canceled it. All right, so then when it's over, you can finish and have another video to highlight the point about sharks I found using the search engine. And look at that, a massive great white shark and people are swimming around it like it's a puppy. It's pretty amazing. Um, and then I can finish my presentation. I hit end session. Yes, and then that's it, it's over. No more. So uh, Nearpod, uh, if I wanted to create a new one, just real quick to show you how it's done. We'll do this in just a couple seconds. So if I click in lesson in Nearpod, new lesson in Nearpod in the console, you'll get a, a blank like this. By the way, when you, when you open it up, I'm gonna go back here. When you open it up, you're not gonna have all of your lessons. So I have all of these lessons that I've done, okay? But you are not gonna have this. You're just gonna have this probably. So I'm gonna click lesson in Nearpod again. And I'm going to create slides. Now, when I add a slide, there are two I could add, content or activity. First, I'm going to add content. So I go content, slide. And then I'll just maybe put here sharks. And I will add a picture if I want or add text. So here's my text. And I can copy that. Copy my text here that I want to add. And then I click the little plus button. And I add the text. There it is. I can make it larger. There it is, very easy to do. Then I can say, hey, I want a background picture. So I go here and I'm just gonna type in shark. And I can choose any photo I want. I'll choose that one. It's a nice dark blue square. Then here I can change the, the font to white. So it's a little bit clearer. And then if I want, I could add audio. So I click the audio here, add audio. I'm going to upload my own audio, and I want this one right here, this shark wave file. I open that up, and it just takes a second. And here it is. Millions of television views. So then I hit save and exit. And then I'll add a basic activity. So then let's say I want to do a gap fill. So I'm going to go this time activities. And I am going to do fill in the blank. And I'm going to change the color to this scheme. I paste in my text. And there we go. And then, then I have to click the words I want to be used in the gap fill. And I just click. They come over here. I hit done. And it's ready to go. And then if I want to add a video, I just Add slides, I click video here, and da, 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 it's going to come up. Uh, then I go to my library, oh, I mean, I'm sorry, I go to YouTube, and then I'm going to say shark swimming, let's say I want to do that, 
Uh, there's the one I just used. So I hit save. And I'll take just a second. It'll, uh, it'll open it up. I save it here. And then now I have the video here. I can move that to the front. And that's how easy it is to make an activity. Now, um, so then I have to say sharks demo. And then I'm just going to say my demo here. I have to select the group. So I'm going to say higher ed. And I will say this is language arts. So it's kind of like Kahoot. You got to do that. They make you do it. And then it's done. It's ready to go. And then when I want to launch it, I say live participation. And here it is. Ta -da. And then I would have the students, I would share that code. Now I can also do it. Uh, I'm going to leave it. Yeah, resume later. I can also give it as homework. And they have the new beta. You can also do it with Zoom. I didn't do it today because I, I just wanted to be careful. Now, there's one other thing. If you go to Nearpod Library, this is the coolest thing. Thanks to our wonderful sponsors today. If you type in eFuture, e hyphen future and type that in there you get all of these wonderful lessons that were made by eFuture so they have their own content in there and I have to finish I did not get to quizzes but I will make a video but just this just came out this week everybody just so you know quizzes is now in the game and they've made it to where you can add slides before your question so if you use quizzes you can now add question, you can import a slide, add a question, import a slide, add a question, and so that's how it works. And I've got five minutes left, so I'm gonna stop. Um, and that's it, if there are any questions, um, I am happy. Oh, and actually, wait, 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 one more thing, one more thing, sorry. <laughs> one more thing, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen just one more time. Uh, let's go back here to Chrome. Okay, so if you go to this website, meals.org okay go to meals.org you can sign up for my email list and i have free training free it's free don't worry free 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 and we go over all these tools i have a new course that's coming out and you get an email and the video explains how to do it step by step it's m-e-e-l-s.org now there's another place you could also go i'm going to put it back up here in a minute you can go to lo.org that's my website with all the free audio. And if you do the free courses by Ello, we also have courses for teachers, how to teach online. It's the same course. And Ello has all of the audio. So there's meals, free, Ello, free. Uh, that's it. All right. And uh, I'm ready to take questions. I've only got three minutes. I'm really sorry. Sorry, Gary. No, no. I was going too fast. No problem at all. Um, I guess a lot of the uh, a lot of our attendees here were asking uh, whether they can get the PPTs and materials that you use today. If you were able to. Yes, them with you. you can. Actually, I can get them for you right now. I will um, uh, share them. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah. Let me just give me a second. And while I'm doing that, do uh, you want to ask me another question? Uh, let's see, in our Q&A, uh, let's see. Can we make flip cards or flashcards in PowerPoint or something we can embed in PowerPoint for flip cards? Uh, uh, is that an app, a special app, flip cards? Um, I don't, yeah, like, of course you can make, you can make like uh, flip cards, but yeah, like normal like if you're cards. I'm not about quite... normal flashcards, so like just having a picture and a and a word. I think you can make that on PowerPoint quite simply. Yeah, you can embed it. You have to use what's called SlideShare, uh, and at SlideShare you have to have an account with LinkedIn. It's kind of weird how they do it, but um, you need it. Same thing with Lynda.com. You have to have a LinkedIn account these days. So um, if you have that, you can do it. And by the way, I'm frantically trying to get to my. Uh, my, if you can uh, just, uh, what we'll do, uh, you can just send me the, your like link with all the resources. Yeah. I'll put the link in the follow-up email that Zoom sends out to all of the attendees. Okay, so although I do have it. Okay, and just in case people are like, they want it right now, I do have yeah. it. Um, people with the link can view. Let me just go ahead and change this here. 
Uh, yeah, so he'll be linking right. it in the chat, but I'll also put it in the follow-up email that you will receive from Zoom, um, basically same time tomorrow. So an email should be coming, uh, you should receive it tomorrow. So once we get that, I'll be sure to include that cool. in our email, and you'll be having uh, that email to you as well. Yep. Uh, yes, Karina, if you uh, want to need help arranging a workshop, I can definitely help you. I'm sorry, I'm noticing the, the chat window for the first time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it goes I quite never quickly. Look at it. <laughs> it goes quite yeah. Um, we have another question here asking about um, how to, let's see, my supervisor mentioned that when I do PowerPoints, the students can't see my face much. What can I do about this? Oh, uh, so they want them to see your face? Uh, that's, and actually then in that case, you definitely want to use Nearpod or Pear Deck. I didn't talk about that, but you want to use Near, Nearpod because what you can do is have, you, you don't share your screen. Actually, PowerPoint is so much better for that. So you have your mug, your face on the video, and then you just share your PowerPoints using Nearpod. I do this a lot. I do, usually when I do Nearpod, I do not share my screen. So they cannot see my screen. I had to share my screen so you can see how the back end works. But then the students, they see the PowerPoint and they just focus on the PowerPoint and they can arrange it so they've got your big face and the PowerPoint however they like it. And, last and by the way, uh, Nearpod, 100 megabytes. You get 100 megabytes, full functionality, at 100 megabytes, so that would be two of my shark slides, basically. Okay. And last one here, in Nearpod, would you use the student's pace for homework? Student's pace, student's Oh, pace. yeah, you could, yeah. Again, I'm sorry, I probably, I could have done one. Yes, it works excellent. You can share a link and they just do it. Some of the functionality needs to be removed. Obviously, they can't do race to the top. They, they don't like, uh, they can't do collaboration boards. Uh, they just made it so you can use polls, but you couldn't even do polls before, but all the other stuff you can do. And that looks like... Is that it? Okay, and also, if people want to email me, here's my email. Um, I didn't share it last week. I think that's it, todd at lo.org. So if you email me, uh, if you have any questions, you need any help, uh, please feel free. I should have put up a form. Uh, but if you just go to the website, either Ello or Meals, you can sign up today. And if you want to, uh, there's also my contact information at Ello. At Ello. That's it. Gary, I, I, I bit off more than I could chew again. <laughs> it's all good. That's a lot of useful resources. I'm sure everyone has been uh, quite happy with uh, everything that you covered for today. So for the certificates, again, for the people that are that this is your first time, um, please contact uh, these emails here. Again, if you haven't already received um, your certificate, even from last week, uh, like I've talked about our team here at eFuture, we have a very small, kind of a small team, so we ask help from all of our lovely uh, partners in the different countries. So these are their contact infos. Do try to have a little bit of patience. We have hundreds of people coming in, so you know the kind of certificates stack up quite quickly. Um, if you haven't received them uh, within a few days or so, um, be sure to message us on Facebook, but and uh, we will contact our partners and uh, confirm with you. So these are the emails here. Um, these are the countries that we have partners in. Everywhere else, Nepal, uh, India, I've seen Hong Kong. Contact us at inquiry at eltkorea.com, okay, and we'll get you your certificate. Uh, for the recording, I see everyone asking about the recording. We will be uploading it in the coming days. We have been quite quick with our turnaround for uh, webinars. So go to our YouTube channel. Uh, my colleague has just posted the, the link in the chat. Um, subscribe and all of our resources, videos, everything we have is on our YouTube page. So if you, wanted, if you want to review today's webinar or last week's webinar, they will be uploaded there. Uh, we have model lessons and other content coming up. Um, here's our Facebook page. Again, if you have any questions or want to inquire about your certificate, please contact us on Facebook or uh, email uh, inquiry at eltkorea.com. 
We will be posting our next month's webinar schedule on our Facebook page. Okay? Uh, Jennifer, that is correct. That is uh, Todd's email. Uh, we will be, I will be putting a link. So usually with Zoom, there is a link or there is an email that they send to attendees automatically after the webinar. I will be sure to add the link for the resources in that email as well if you didn't um, catch the link earlier. So that will be getting sent to you tomorrow as well, okay? So we will be coming back uh, next week, or not next week, but next month. Um, our schedules will be posted soon. Um, I'm not sure if my colleague had posted. We do want to get uh, as much feedback from you guys as possible. Uh, what topics you'd like to hear, what um, any subjects and uh, things that you would like webinars done. And if uh, you just have any questions for us, uh, please put them in the survey. So we try to take as much as your feedback as we can and kind of uh, put it in our next webinars and keep all of those in mind, okay? So thank you guys so much for all your help and thank you Todd, for all of these resources the past two weeks. I know Thank I'll you. be kind of playing around with them as well. And uh, hopefully, uh, if we do some model lessons later, try to utilize these uh, applications uh, for everyone as well. So thank you, guys. And thank you, Todd. And I uh, hope you all you. are being safe. And um, I hope you all and your loved ones are safe and doing well. And be sure to, again, check our Facebook for next month's schedule, and we'll all see you in, uh, in October. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time.